Politically speaking, we have the Africa Union Commission. I said we have two fundamental problems, climate change on one end and economic growth on another. For a very long time again, we have been subjected to a global financial architecture that is oppressive, that is unfair, where countries like Guinea-Bissau and Kenya and others, when they go to the financial markets, we find development resources at 10%, 12%, while countries in the global north go to the same markets and obtain development resources at half a percent, 1%, maybe 2%, five, six, seven times more. It is not possible, ladies and gentlemen, for us to develop at the same rate when we go to the same markets, we get different, we get development resources at different rates. And we have firmly asked that there is an imperative movement that must change the framework of the international financial architecture to be fairer so that all of us can walk into the same markets and obtain development resources at equal and the same interest rates. We don't think it's too much to ask if we ask for fairness. We think it's the bare minimum anybody can ask. And I'm very proud that the voice of my brother and others, leaders collectively in our continent is beginning to bear fruit. Number one, in COP28, the Nairobi Declaration position we took as African continent, as African continent made significant influence in the outcome of COP28, meaning that the world is beginning to take Africa seriously because we are speaking with one voice. And number two, the World Bank has now agreed that we are going to have consultations with 72 countries, among them Guinea-Bissau and Kenya, on the next replenishment of the International Development Association resources for concessional financing as a first step in beginning to level the playing field when it comes to access to development resources. Through appropriate linkages and collaborations, Africa's universities of technology like this one must facilitate this and become trainers of innovators and the incubators of globally competitive innovations and innovators. This is how we will leapfrog our way beyond our present challenges, innovate our way from under the onerous burden of underdevelopment and become the continent envisioned in Agenda 2063. The capacity for technological research and development for innovation can enhance our capacity to attract investment and enable us to solve development challenges. I am inspired by the way our leaders throughout the continent and the people of Africa have engaged 
with the discourse around climate change, I am proud that we remain closely in touch with nature and understand the connection between our actions and the survival of other forms of life, including ourselves.